स्टैंडर्ड टेंथ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी पार्ट टू चैप्टर नंबर थ्री लाइफ प्रोसेसेस इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स पार्ट टू नाउ इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द सेकंड पार्ट दैट इज द सेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन दिस द टू एन नंबर ऑफ क्रोमोसोम्स व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट इन द पेरेंटल सेल्स आर रिड्यूस्ड टू हाफ दैट मीन्स this haploid gamete is produced and haploid gamete from male and haploid gamete from female when get united they form again 2n number of chromosome condition that means diploid condition in this cell this occurs with the help of two haploid germ cells namely female gamete and male gamete by the union of haploid female gamete that is with n number of chromosomes and male gamete with n number of chromosomes a diploid zygote 2n is formed this process is called as fertilization now sexual reproduction in plants in plants the structure for reproduction is a flower the flower consists of four floral whorls in sequence from outside to inside as that means suppose this is a structure of flower diagrammatic representation is here and in this flower structure the four whorls are there a whorl means the individuals are arranged in a circular manner out of which first one is the calyx outermost whorl then inside to that of the calyx there is corolla colorful petals are there and inside that these are the antheracium and this is the central most part is the gynaecia out of these whorls the outermost green whorl that is calyx is made up of sepals and the colored whorl that is the corolla it is made up of petals now these two whorls which are the outermost doesn't take part in actual reproduction but they protect the inner whorls the internal structure of flower the innermost two whorls are androecium and gynaecium these whorls take part in the actual reproduction therefore these are called as essential whorls important whorls out of which now we are going to discuss about the androecium it is a male whorl consisting of individual subunit called stamen and gynaecium is the female whorl consisting individual subunit called carpel now what is the meaning of bisexual flower the flower in which both the androecium and gynaecium are present these are called as bisexual flowers example is of flower of hibiscus unisexual flower the flower in which out of the both androecium and gynaecium only one type of whorl is present if only androecium is present in the flower it is called male flower and if only gynaecium is present androecium is totally absent then it is called as female flower the stalk which supports the flower is called pedicel the flowers with pedicel are called pedicellate flower and some flowers which are without pedicel are called sessile that means they are directly attached to the stem now again this image is repeated here and now we are going to study the structure of essential whorls now androecium it comprises of stamens what is the meaning of this stamen 
stamen consists of this thin filament like structure also known as filament and at the tip there is an anther and this anther is nothing but the in marathi we can call it as paragukosh ki jyachyamadhe paragukarn tayar hona rahe anther has four locules inside it and the pollen if we cut it transversely then these locules can be visible pollen grains are developed in the anthers by meiotic divisions when the anther matures it bursts to release the pollen grains out okay now the next part is the gynaecium this is the gynaecium it comprises of single or many carpels in this case in this structure a single carpel is shown but in some cases many carpels may be present in the same flower there is an ovary at the basal solen end this is the ovary a hollow style comes up from the ovary and at the tip of this style there is a stigma this is the ovary and ovary extends in upward direction in a hollow tube this hollow tube is called as style and at the upper tip there is the stigma ovary what is present in the ovary that we will see ovary contains one or many ovules these small globular structures are shown here these are the ovules and in each ovule an embryo sac is formed each embryo sac consists of a haploid that means cell with n number of chromosomes haploid egg cell and two haploid polar nuclei and three antipodal cells that structure we will see in the next part see here here this is the carpel entire carpel in this carpel the basal solen part is this ovary this is the style and this is the stigma in this ovary there are many small globular parts called as the ovules and these ovules have the internal structures like this centrally here there is the egg cell polar nuclei are present and here there are the antipodal cells okay again we will see these structures in details further double fertilization in angiosperms before going towards the double fertilization we will discuss first about the pollination the process of transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma is called pollination that means pollen grains are released from the anthers and from these anthers they get migrated or they are transferred to the stigma that process is known as pollination pollination occurs with the help of abiotic agents like wind water or with the help of biotic agents like insects birds and other animals etc sometimes human being also at the time of fertilization the stigma becomes sticky and moist and when pollen grains fall on such sticky stigma they get germinated to form a long pollen tube that means here the pollen germinates and after germination a small tube enters into the stigma and that tube is known as pollen tube at the same time the two male gametes are also formed and they get entered into the pollen tube as the pollen tube gets extended towards the embryo sac through the style then it carries these two male gametes also along with the tip when the pollen tube enters into this embryo sac the tip of the pollen tube gets burst out 
so that it will release the two male gametes inside the embryo sac now this entire process includes two male gametes one male gamete unites with the egg cell to form diploid zygote and the another male gamete fuses with the polar nuclei to form endosperm here fertilization occurs for two times therefore the process is called as double fertilization but actually when a one male gamete fuses with the egg cell and diploid zygote is formed this is the actual fertilization but though also the another gamete fuses with the polar nuclei to form endosperms here two male gametes unite with the egg cell and the polar nuclei for two times hence this process is called as double fertilization the endosperm is formed in this process here fusion of the polar nuclei and the male gamete leads to the formation of endosperm and this endosperm provides the nourishment to the developing seed now as development continues ovule gets developed into seed and the entire ovary gets developed into fruit when the seeds along with the fruit fall down from the tree they get germinated in favorable conditions and a new plantlet starts to grow from it this process is called as seed germination and after germination a new plant starts to grow from the seed thank you